So we got to talk about this guy saying that he voted for Biden in 2020 and he's not voting for him in 2024, meaning he's voting for Trump. The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, is an absolute coward and a fraud. The endorsement that I made uh, years ago with Biden was one I thought was the best decision for me at that time. Am I going to do that again this year? That answer is no. I'm not going to do that because what I realized, what that caused back then was something that tears me up in my guts back then and now, which is division. And that got me. Complete and disgusting cowardice. What The Rock is saying here is he doesn't want to make a presidential endorsement this time at all. Even if he still supports Biden, he doesn't want to endorse anybody. Because when you make an endorsement and you stand up in your beliefs and your values, you're going to upset some people. That's cowardice. It's as much cowardice as anything you could do. To keep your mouth shut is what it takes for a dictator like Donald Trump to rise. Good people not saying anything out of their own greed is how something terrible like that happens. Shame on you. Do the right thing. And that's what it is. Throw me a follow. All right, guys. So in a continuation of the Democrat Party Civil War, we have to talk about another mainstream liberal media propagandist that is upset and having a meltdown over the fact that The Rock is refusing to endorse Joe Biden. Now, here's the thing. It's not just The Rock that is refusing to endorse Joe Biden. You also have other left-wing Democrats, like, for example, Michael Rappaport. You have Cardi B. You have others who have come out and said, you know what? I'm just not going to get on board with Biden and Kamala uh, this cycle. I'm just not going to do it, okay? Because they came out here and they told people to vote for Biden and Kamala because orange man bat, right? I mean, these people really believed that Trump was the cause of all our problems uh, during the pandemic. And that just was not the case. As soon as Biden got in office, things got much worse. Uh, the quote unquote divisiveness that Trump caused that he didn't cause, by the way, it was is all the mainstream liberal media, really. Um, that didn't go away. OK, in fact, uh, the country became more divided under Democrats, because that's how Democrats operate, okay? They are the party of division and hate in this country, okay? And that is why it got worse under Biden. And that's part of the reason why The Rock said, hey, I am not going to endorse Joe Biden, okay? Obviously, the country's not in a good place. But again, the so-called hate and division that was supposed to go away when Trump left office didn't go away. It got worse, okay? So now you have Jamel Hill, uh, sounding off on the fact that The Rock has decided not to endorse Joe Biden. And I want to react to it because I love uh, laughing at liberal black women uh, lose their minds <laughs> over the fact that people are leaving the Democrat Party, okay? And for them, they have an incentive to keep the Democrats in power because these people benefit from Democrats being in power the most, okay? So now they're coming out here and they are trashing anybody uh, who's a Democrat or that votes Democrat for not supporting Joe Biden, right? For saying, hey, I, I, I want to sit out this election. Um, they're now saying, hey, we, we have to attack you and <laughs> try to force you to vote for somebody that you don't want to vote for, right? That's what they're doing. So without further ado, let's get into it. Dwayne Johnson regrets endorsing Joe Biden for president in 2020 because, quote, what that caused was something that tears me up in my guts, which is division. It caused an incredible amount of division. I realize now going into this election, I will not do that. My goal is to bring this country together. I believe in that. There will be no endorsement at this level of influence. I will keep my politics to myself. It's between me and the ballot box. But I will tell you this, like a lot of us out there not trusting of all politicians, I do trust the American people and whoever they vote for, that is my president and who I will support 100%. Your thoughts that is the most statement non-statement i've ever heard and i i love dwayne johnson like you know during my time at espn if you ask people the number one person who they felt like when they did the car wash was like the best person that came through there in terms of like how they interacted with people how nice they were it was easily uh, the rock or number two would be kevin hart and that's the kind of frankly political cowardice that's hard to respect I don't understand how Joe Biden is the divisive one when what he's running against is pushing bigotry, uh, xenophobia, uh, every other phobia and ism you could possibly name. That is what they're literally campaign campaigning on. 
Joe Biden is not campaigning on those same things. Yeah, he actually is campaigning on these things, right? That That is what Democrats are campaigning on, which, again, is the funny part about this, okay? They accuse Trump of campaigning on hate and bigotry, but Trump does not have an anti-black agenda or anti-Latino agenda or an anti any body agenda except maybe anti-illegal immigrants okay but that's not uh overtly bigotry and hate it's just hey we don't want illegals in this country but the democrats do have an anti-white agenda right 100 percent, 100 percent. the democrats campaign on this idea that hey the country is systemically racist that people are old things just because they're so-called person of color and that inherently is divisive okay Democrats are divisive because they use racial identity politics in order to push their agenda. And what's so hilarious about this to me is that people like Jamel Hill, who claim to be so-called pro-black, uh, it seems to me that she really, really, really wants to be white. And the same thing goes for Joy Reid. I mean, look at her hairstyle. Where is this blonde hair coming from, <laughs> right? Your hair is not naturally blonde. Why do you want to have the hairstyle of a white woman so much? I don't understand it. I don't get it, which is so funny because I always have to look back at these individuals because they'll say people like me, because my political opinions don't align. Oh, well, you're a sellout. You ain't really black, but you don't see me <laughs> running around trying to rock the hairstyles of the white man. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. I embrace my natural hair because I'm comfortable with who I am. OK, however, it seems like people like Joy Reid and the Jamel Hills of the world who rock these blonde wigs and all this fake hair, this hair that's not natural to them. It seems to me they're the ones that may have some issues with who they are. OK, they might not like themselves uh, because, again, they keep trying to be white. Right? You keep trying your best to look as white as you can. Why don't you embrace your beautiful African features? I don't understand. I don't get it. Why don't you embrace them? I, and it really blows my mind. It really blows my mind. All, all these people, you know, again, you, you got the people like Don Lemons, okay? The Katanji Brown Jacksons, the Ilhan Omars, the AOCs, right? All these individuals that claim to be fighting against white supremacy, they land up with the white man, getting the great white pipe, trying to rock the hairstyles of the white woman, right? <laughs> instead, of, instead of embracing their own hairstyles, instead of, I don't know, being with their people, which by the way, I personally don't care. I personally do not care about who you choose to sleep with, what hairstyles you choose to rock. I'm just calling out the hypocrisy of it. Because again, people like me are accused of not really being black and wanting to be white because of my political opinions. But yeah, again, you don't see me doing stuff like this, right? You don't see me running around trying to look like the white man. And I haven't even had a white girlfriend since I was in high school. Okay, so I'm just saying, it just blows my mind because if, a white person was to rock braids, a white woman was to rock braids, um, they'll be accused of cultural appropriation, right? You're culturally appropriating black culture, okay? I mean, we've covered stories about how white women who rock braids uh, are getting beat up in the streets for doing that. But yet, Jamel Hill can dye her hair blonde in a way that's not natural, right? It doesn't even look right. But yet, you know, again, that's not cultural appropriation. Again, it's amazing how that works. I don't really get it. But, you know, back to the subject here, when she says that The Rock has been a political coward, um, I don't think that The Rock has been a political coward. I think that The Rock is saying, hey, I'm just going to sit it out. Like, I'm just not going to get political this election cycle. And he has the right to do that. He also spoke out against woke culture. OK, and again, he basically said that the Biden administration was divisive. So he's taking a stance, right? Um, it's just not the stance that you like. But what real political cowardice is, is people like Stephen A. Smith and the Charles Barkleys of the world, right? The people who know better, but yet come out here and say, well, they're going to vote Democrat anyways because they're afraid of the mob saying that, well, you ain't really black because you're not voting for Joe Biden or you support Trump. That's real political cowardice, right? That, those are the real cowards in the political arena, the Stephen A. Smiths, the Charles Barkleys of the world. Again, the people that know better, okay? However, they're going to vote Democrat anyways. The Rock, on the other hand, is saying, well, I'm just going to sit out, <laughs> right? And again, I, I don't think that that's cowardice. I think that he's just saying, well, you know, hey, I'm just going to keep my opinions to myself. 
Nothing wrong with that. I would much rather you keep your opinions to yourself than for you to come out here and tell me you know, you know that Biden's the worst candidate than Trump. You know that Trump's policies were better than Biden's, but you're going to vote for Biden anyways over some stupid stuff because you have liberal media induced Trump derangement? Because you're afraid of having your black car pulled? You're afraid of not being invited to the cookout anymore? That to me, again, is what being a coward is in the political arena. Okay. I mean, The Rock is already having his Samoan carpool. They say he ain't really Samoan, right? They're, they're already doing that. So, again, he, he's not a coward. He's getting the backlash, okay? The backlash that you're giving him right now, again, shows you that, no, no, he, he, he definitely took a stance. It just wasn't a stance that you liked. And so I don't even understand how Joe Biden got attacked for being the one who's dividing people. Um, if he wants to stop the division, then he shouldn't at all make it seem like he is aligned with the side that is pushing only division. That's their entire agenda. They have no policy on the entire thing that they have is to get you to hate somebody else that you perceive is lower on the totem, totem pole than you. Okay, so yeah, the Democrats and their agenda is to get you to hate somebody that you perceive is higher on the totem pole than you, right? Two can play that game, okay? Except one is true and the other one isn't, okay? The Republican Party is not about trying to get people to hate blacks or brown people. No, the Republican Party is about trying to uh, put policies in place that are better for this country, like trying to close the border, okay? Trying to get tougher on crime, trying to rein in this foreign spending and sending this money overseas. Well, put it this way, the MAGA <laughs> version of the Republican Party, because the neocons, I mean, they're basically on board with, you know, the Democrat agenda and all that other stuff. But I'm just saying, MAGA, Trump supporters more... More specifically, we're on board with whatever is best for this country. And whatever is best for this country is what's best to, for everybody else. Okay? I'm so serious. I just find it funny how, again, she keeps accusing Trump of being the one that's divisive when it's like, well, again, the whole Democrat Party and the Biden administration, um, they're literally built on grievance politics against the white man. Right? Everything was the white man's fault. And we have to enact these policies because we need to uh, essentially level the playing field with the white man every single last one of the democrats policies are about that that's that's what it's about okay that's what it's about trump's policies are not based on race okay and hatred of any race or anything like that it's really about okay what's best for this country and that's it but again you know it's just it's just it's just hilarious how again these people they get so mad because people aren't endorsing Joe Biden when it's like, well, why don't you ask yourself, why aren't people endorsing Joe Biden? Can you tell me what Joe Biden has done that's so great that deserves an endorsement, that deserves for people to come out here and to support him publicly, to risk their reputation on outside of Trump, right? Don't mention Trump, right? Can you tell me why should I vote for Joe Biden without mentioning Trump? None of them can do it. None of them can do it. And so even though he said he was going to keep his, his ballot to himself, he actually didn't because there's only one other person who will be the presidential nominee. So unless you plan to write in yourself um, or plan to vote for Donald Trump, you've made your decision that you are voting for xenophobia and, and bigotry and all these other things that you claim to be stand against. So I just thought that wasn't his best moment. And it was so unnecessary, too, because I don't know. I wasn't going around wondering who The Rock was voting for. So I don't know why he just decided he needed to share that. Well, I mean, <laughs> I believe he was asked about it in an interview. So, I mean, hey, at the end of the day, it is what it is. I mean, a lot of you celebrities come out here and feel the need to tell people who you're voting for and to campaign for certain candidates. But again, when, you know, a celebrity comes out here and they don't, get along with the Democrats, right? They don't go along with the Biden administration. This is what happens. I mean, The Rock didn't even say he was voting for Trump. He just said, hey, I'm going to sit it out. I'm not going to endorse anybody. I'm going to keep my political opinions to myself. And the mob is upset, right? People are boo-hoo whining and crying about it, which tells you everything you need to know about how a lot of these people who want to vote for Trump, who want to come out here and support Trump, can't do it overtly because of the backlash that they get from the medium. It's pretty fascinating stuff. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.